Hello everyone, this is Robert, and inside this crate is a CloudRay QS50. That is a 50 watt fiber laser. This is a big boy. This is a lot bigger than I thought. And anytime a crate shows up with a tool in it, I am very, very excited. So in this video, I'm gonna do just some basic unboxing, basic setup, kind of share some stats and some specs with you. But I'm kind of getting into fiber lasers. So um, let's unbox this thing and eventually we'll see what it can do. So I know I've probably said a couple times I'm not going to do any more laser reviews, but when CloudRay reached out to me, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to compare the GWIC G2, which is a more commercial hobbyist level fiber laser to something much more industrial, the 50 watt cloud ray laser. These are very different, even though they are very similar on paper. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to see why there is the price difference and what the difference between these two really is. So here is the accessory box. Obviously you can see I already opened this. Uh, we've got uh, kind of a DB9 to USB cable. We've got some instructions, some other stuff. Uh, foot pedal switch. The thing I like about this one is you actually have a foot pedal switch so you can do um, repetitive stuff, which is kind of nice. Power cord, Ooh, a bunch of gloves, more USB cables, some tools, some other basic things. Looks like some stock and whatever. And then the glasses. One kind of interesting thing about this whole thing that I'm observing right now is it looks like each one of these is kind of put together one off. It doesn't look like they have, I don't know, like a huge factory with these already pre-sealed. Like everything is kind of um, bespoke. <laughs> I guess you could say it looks like each one of these is packaged individually and this is all just kind of thrown together. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm not trying to make this a negative. It's just... Um, it looks like they might do a lot of custom work, um, doing like custom lasers or something, or you know, custom configurations, things like that. So kind of interesting. I actually kind of prefer that. I don't like it when I open it up and this whole thing is just this perfect uh, foam nested thing and you know, it's all about the packaging because you're just gonna throw that stuff away anyway and it's just a lot of waste in my mind. So just an observation. So I decided to get a better angle um, to kind of just show the scale of this thing. This is the base plate. Um, let me see if I can grab my little G-Wick, but the G-Wick, the whole size of it is like that big. This is so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So FYI. So yeah, that is the entirety of the G-Wick resting on just the base plate. So this is making me pretty excited. This is a big boy. So this is kind of what I mean about the bespoke packaging. It seems like everything is just kind of individually packaged and you're not really buying a machine as much as you are kind of these individual pieces. And if you go to CloudRay's website, you can kind of see why. Not only do they sell full machines, but they also sell all of these pieces individually. So if you want to kind of put together your own fiber laser, you can get the Galvo head separately. You can get kind of that um, laser box up top. You can get the stand, you can get the controller. All of these pieces are sold individually. So it kind of makes sense why they wouldn't have, you know, like a uh, custom foam for all of this. They just kind of package each piece individually and then put it in a crate. And I will say that the packaging on this is very, very well done, and I don't foresee any issues with um, getting damaged in transit at all. So I wasn't anticipating that this would come with a rotary, but it does. And this is the nicest rotary I've ever seen from a laser. Granted, I haven't really done industrial stuff, but I'll weigh this later. This is a nice, nice solid piece with a legit chuck. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool. You got the jaws and everything in there. So nice rotary. I'm guessing that this is the main arm, you know, the vertical structure of it. The <laughs> pew pew head seems like it's right here. The base is down there, the, the, the laser fiber source, so. I'm never really entirely sure how much people want to see something getting unboxed and me just sitting there unwrapping things, but 
I don't know, here you go. I left it in, you can skip ahead if you want. Um, but once again, everything was extremely well packaged and it almost kind of bummed me up because there's always a ton of packaging to get rid of once you unbox something like this, but so it goes. So I know this is a bit of a weird angle, but we've got the actual head here. Yeah, it just comes, wow. That is big. The video makes it look really small, but yeah, so that is the actual laser head with the galvo on the end that is connected to fiber source over here and then the bed. Once again, just off camera, you can see the G2 just to kind of give you a size comparison. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out and put all this together. So I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to show because it's all pretty straightforward. I think the biggest issue is just kind of maneuvering everything around because you got this big um, bundle of um, fiber going between the fiber source and the actual head. So, you know, they're kind of awkward to maneuver around. And the base is actually relatively heavy. It's not like, you know, too heavy, but it's just kind of this big heavy box. Think of like a really old, you know, desktop PC. It's just, you know, kind of chunky and heavy. Um, so that's really the only thing here. So assembly is really straightforward. You basically have four screws that are going to hold the column down to the base. And then you have another four screws that hold the laser head to the column. And that's, that's pretty much it. The head itself kind of does have some adjustment. It kind of slides forward and backwards and then kind of left to right. And when I was looking in the manual trying to figure out, you know, exactly where I'm supposed to be positioning it, I couldn't find it. And the more I thought about this, it's kind of obvious is it doesn't really matter where it's positioned. As long as it's lined up and it's not just, you know, crooked or sideways or something like that, you should be fine. It's just adjustable that so you can slide the head back if you need to fit something else on there, or slide it forward. So you just kind of put it where you think it should go. And then when we actually get into the setup, you can, you know, use the laser dot to shine a grid down on the bottom and just kind of make sure it's lined up for whatever it is you're going to be engraving. So now that we have this all put together, let's talk about some specs. This is a 50 watt fiber laser. So inside here it has a 50 watt fiber source from Rakus. This is actually the same company that makes the fiber source that is in the GWIC G2, but that's just a 20 watt. This is a 50 watt, so more powerful. Both of these and most all lasers are gonna be the 1064 nanometer wavelength, which can do all sorts of metal engraving. More on that later. Um, but that's what's inside here. You also have the controller. The interesting thing about the controller is this can work with both EasyCAD, which pretty much everything works with EasyCAD, but it can also work with Lightburn, which is pretty exciting for me because that is kind of what I use for my other lasers as well. You've got the actual laser over here, the Galvo head, um, the height adjustment. The height adjustment is how you focus the laser. Speaking of focusing, this has kind of an interesting focusing mechanism. Um, I mean, this is kind of how they all do it, but you have this little um, two laser beams here and they basically come together and you just spin this up and down until the two beams focus on one point and then you are focused. The GWIC only has like this one beam kind of thing and it's a lot harder. Uh, many reasons, I'm not going to go into it, but the dual beam is actually just much, much easier. The actual work envelope of this is 200 by 200 millimeters, which is actually quite large, as you can see from this big machine. So it's about 7.9 by 7.9 inches, which is pretty nice. They also do have an option to switch out the um, F theta lens for a smaller, so you can go with a 110 by 110 if you're looking for kind of more fine detail. If you're only going to be doing really small stuff, you might want to go with the 110 by 110 because you're going to get more kind of resolution in that smaller area. The F theta lens is basically what takes the beam that comes straight from the Galvo out into the base and then kind of, you know, adjusts it and compresses it for the different size. I know I'm like really glossing over this, but that is basically the lens that is going to focus or project it down into the footprint of the workable area. For the controller, you have this nice big metal box. It's pretty heavy duty. You've got the emergency stop. Um, this turns on the controller and that turns on the laser switch. And on the back side, it plugs into this little foot pedal. This is more of an industrial machine. We'll talk about that next, but the focus of this machine is much more industrial, as I'm just saying. 
having a foot switch, you can just sit there and press, go, reload, press again, reload. You can do things like um, serial numbers, things like that to where every single one increments up and the foot switch is really nice. I also like this because I can be kind of away from the machine, look away, put on my glasses, hit the button and not really have to interact with it, which is kind of nice. One of the reasons why I wanted to review the Cloud Ray is I think it gives a nice contrast to the GWIC G2. The GWIC is definitely much more of a consumer friendly laser and the price point I think reflects that. You're talking about like $1,500, $1,600 versus something like this is more in the $4,500 range. So it's about three times as much for this. Granted, it's a 20 watt versus a 50 watt but there's a lot more differences to them. This is definitely built much more as an industrial machine. I mean, I'm looking here right on the side, it says Cloud Ray Industrial Solutions. This is something that you would have more in a business environment, or if you're looking to really do a serious Etsy shop or something like that, if you're looking to do production or volume, something like this could make a lot more sense depending on your budget, depending on what you're looking to do. But the GWIC is a really great entry level into fiber lasers. 20 watt versus 50 watt, sure, they're gonna have a little bit of differences. This is not meant to be portable. Um, this is gonna take up a fair amount of room. The reason it's sitting right here is I don't really have a home for it because I'm probably gonna need to get a stand and find a home. This is definitely a large machine. Um, this is a 36 inch deep or wide workbench and it takes up a significant portion. So that's something you're gonna have to think about. The GWIC I could probably tuck into the corner. It's much smaller, it's meant to be portable. You can take it off the stand and kind of use it portably, which is kind of nice. This, however, is not meant to be portable and it is very sturdy. With the GWIC, I kind of have an issue with like the tilt mechanism, which is kind of cool it's really hard to get it refocused back to perfectly lined up with the base. Something like this is extremely sturdy and it's not going to move around on you when you adjust it. So kind of things to think about. The other thing about this is that it does work with both EasyCAD and Lightburn. So it's made to be a little bit more universal. Lightburn is definitely a much nicer software. I've heard not very good things about EasyCAD. It's not generally well liked in the industry. It's just kind of the software you have to use. So these are just kind of the contrasts that I want to bring up is one of them is very much a consumer slash hobbyist machine. The other is going to be much more in the commercial industrial space. So if you're looking to really run production, something like this would make more sense. And if you're looking to just kind of do occasional projects here and there, something like the GWIC actually might be better. So here's a closer look at the uh, rotary that comes with the laser. This is at least the one that came with uh, my configuration that they sent me. If you check out Cloud Array's website, they have a lot of different rotaries for many different applications, but this is what I got. It has a three jaw chuck at the end, comes with a chuck key, and this is a three inch diameter. And as you can see, I have the, um, I guess the outside jaws, but it also comes with a set of inside jaws. So you can do, you know, both inside clamping or outside clamping. And the whole frame is nice, sturdy aluminum. We've got a nice, sturdy aluminum base. It comes inside this with the um, fasteners to screw it down to the bed of the machine. And then you have a couple screws in the back and on here that you can use to kind of tilt it. So if you're doing something kind of conical, right, you can kind of adjust this so that you're lasering flat. But yeah, pretty, pretty nice piece, nice long cord. This plugs directly into the back of the controller. And this thing weighs just under 10 pounds, which it's very, very substantial, feels good. Um, once this is bolted into the table, you're gonna have no issues with it whatsoever. So I might get around to trying this. I just don't really do that much rotary stuff or any rotary stuff, but yeah, there it is. Okay, so now that everything's together, let's go ahead and install everything and get it running. So the included USB drive has a lot of good stuff in it. That would be the first place to start. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and we're gonna go first into the manual. You can see in here that we have the full manual, including the um, rotary and um, the actual user guide for kind of easy CAD and the USB driver and software installation. I'm not gonna do that on camera because it's pretty straightforward. But we also, in the video section, have a lot of really good videos and the USB driver is in there as well. There is also this nine point 
correction. So there's kind of a core file, and we're gonna talk about this in a second, but the lens needs to be kind of calibrated. Thankfully, this comes already calibrated, but here's what the process looks like, is it basically marks out this grid, and you can see it's kind of squished and weird there, and then you're just going to basically put in these numbers, put in these parameters, and then you will get a nice, clean box when it's done. So, kind of interesting, but that is the calibration that is done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight into the software, which is EasyCAD. You're gonna need to select the appropriate one, which is the F290, that's the focal length, and then 200 by 200. And then we're just gonna go ahead and open EasyCAD 2. The machine is on right now, the controller's on, but the laser's not on, because it's noisy. So this is gonna load up and everything looks good from here. So what we can do is let's just go ahead and test this out. Let's just do a circle and we have it centered to the middle. And let's just do 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters and that is centered in the middle and we'll go ahead and click apply. And there we go. And if I go ahead and hit light, if the laser's on, we should be able to see this on the bed. And there we go. So we have a 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter circle, nice and good. Now, if we had any issues with this, what we can do is you can go down here to parameters, and then you see right here, here's our correction. So if this isn't checked, you can go ahead and check this, and then you can literally load in your correction file. This is the correction for the F290, which is the lens that we have. And that will go ahead and correct it so that you get a nice round circle and you got a nice square box as well. And you can also do this manually here, but just kind of something to take into account. Now, what's interesting here is we have the circle. I want to engrave it. I want to do some stuff. Well, if we go over here, it has used default parameters. If I uncheck that and click select, select parameter from library, you see that there's really nothing in here. So what we're gonna do next is we're actually gonna load parameters and then so we can have all these presets for all the different types of materials that we're gonna be using. Okay, so to load the parameters, the first thing we need to do is close out of EasyCAD, and then we're gonna go over to lasereverything.net. This is a really good YouTube channel that I found that has a ton of parameters, and this is actually a really good source for information on fiber lasers as well. So I have a link down to his YouTube channel down below in the description. So we're gonna go over to free settings and the free starter pack settings pack, and then scroll down here to free fiber laser parameter library. I've already downloaded this. So over here, this is what it downloads. And what's really cool is he has separated this out for light burn, EasyCAD 2, EasyCAD 3. We're using EasyCAD 2. And then all the different power machines, because obviously these parameters are gonna be a little different depending on the power. This is a 50 watt. So there's your 50. And then it also has the focal length. We have a 200. So go there and there is your parameter. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that and then go back into the EasyCAD. Here's your parameters and we're just gonna paste it here. I'm gonna rename this, I'm gonna like, let's see. I'm gonna put this one somewhere else for right now. Just as a backup. And there we go. So now we have the parameter library. So we're gonna go back into EasyCAD. Now if we draw a little something, select parameter library, look at all that. Steel, general, deep engraved, white finish, aluminum, all of these wonderful, wonderful parameters, everything into leather. So this was a really cool find. Definitely go to his YouTube channel and subscribe and support him because this is absolutely fantastic. The other cool thing about this is because it's for all the different powers, 
you can use this on the GWIC 20 watt, um, or if you have a different um, power laser yourself, you can use this for pretty much anything. So this is kind of a bit of a game changer. Okay, so now we've got all the boring stuff out of the way, let's actually engrave something. Um, I've got these like little business cards, they're aluminum with a black coating on them. They do really well on this machine and it comes with a pack of these. So if we hit F1, we can see that this is our pattern that we're gonna do. I'm just doing some text here. So I can lay that over top and then hit F2. And there we go. Fiber lasers never get old. Um, this is probably not the right uh, profile to use. Let's try another one that's a little bit faster. So that previous one was aluminum general. This is like aluminum bright white. Eh, let's see what that looks like. Nice. So yeah, everything looks to be working um, pretty well. Let's uh, test out a couple other things. Do you have some old dirty pennies that you need cleaned up? Fiber laser to the rescue. There you go. Nice and shiny. <laughs> it's maybe a little bit too clean, but it's pretty cool. So lastly, let's try a piece of steel and see how dark of an engraving we can get on this. I think I'm using like the dark setting for steel. So let's give that a shot. So I'm not gonna make you watch this whole thing. Um, it ended up taking a lot longer than I think, like maybe 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Um, I was just using one of the presets and the speed was really slow and the power was really low, which was kind of interesting. But eh, you always gotta play around with these things. You know, this is the first time I'm messing with this fiber laser. So, you know, messing with the parameter. So it's just something you gotta really mess with and tune and tweak. And you can obviously rewrite those parameters into something that works better for you. But the good news is it definitely seems like it's doing something on the steel, so that's nice. So yeah, overall it came out pretty good. There's a little bit of you know, visible cross hatching down here and up there, but the contrast is really good. It can absolutely mark into steel. I need to play with those settings a little bit more because that was obviously very painfully slow. I think it was set to like 80 millimeters a second. I think this thing can do like 7,000. So yep, once again, just gotta always kind of tweak the settings, but no issue with clarity, crispness. Uh, everything looks pretty cool and it can definitely mark steel. So I think I'm going to end up having a lot of fun with this machine. I just kind of need to find a final home for it. I don't really know where it's going to go just yet. It takes up a fair amount of space. And I have a couple projects in mind, but those are way down the road, so stay tuned. Special thanks to Laser Everything for all the information they provided and their free parameter library. That is really cool, so good on them. Go ahead and check out their YouTube linked down below. And of course, special thanks to CloudRay for providing the laser for review. Uh, there is an affiliate link down below. You know how YouTube works, so there's an affiliate link down below. They did not pay me or compensate me in any way for doing this review, and they didn't tell me what to say. This was just kind of all on my own, so they just sent me a laser and let me play around with it, which is always really neat. So hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully you know you get a better idea of the difference between a more commercial laser and a consumer laser. I know I learned a lot kind of comparing the two side by side. 
ultimately they pretty much do the same thing. It's just kind of the form factor, the fit and finish, and the um, industrialness of this that's really the difference. But as you saw, this is a lot louder, it's a lot bulkier, it's uh, definitely going to go into a bigger shop. You wouldn't have this in a little apartment, things like that. So anyway, um, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.